Yes, sir. Welcome those of you joining us online. I've always wanted to say that. And in person, it's good to be here. And uh, I'm going to start by saying thank you to everyone who's joined us this morning. It's good to be here. And lovely to have you with us. Lovely to be back at Valley Drive. I've got a very creative uh, title for my message today. Um, COVID. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, exciting, isn't it? It's good. Let's pray. Father God, as we open your word today, I pray that you just take my thoughts, may they be your thoughts. Lord, as we just spend a bit of time hearing from you, as we spend a bit of time around this interesting theme uh, that you've laid on my heart, I pray that we indeed will engage with you, Holy Spirit of God, that you will minister, that you'll have your way in our lives, that you'll lead and guide what is said and done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The beauty about Zoom and online churches, and, and as many of you know, I've been pre-recording messages and things like that. You get maybe one or two takes. It's quite nice. If I'm frustrated or annoyed or that didn't come out right, I go, ah, and I'll push the stop button and then I'll start again. It's lovely. In the beauty of, uh, I use uh, Josiah's bedroom or Studio I, that was Isabel's bedroom. And sometimes I'm in our upstairs lounge room and you can see different uh, parts. And sometimes Noel said, why on earth is your head so close to the camera? And so um, it's great. It's constructive criticism. It's, 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 it's wonderful. It's fantastic. Um, my children also offer interesting comments as well. And Dad, you don't need to put on aftershave. It's only Zoom. <laughs> They can't smell you. So that makes you feel better. That's good. Yeah, that's right. Make me feel better. That's right. So, so thank you for persevering and connecting and, and enjoying all that. And thanks to Ken, he drove me around. He set up cameras and stuff for me and, and, and others as well. And so that was very, very cool. But we're back. And so thank you. And thank you for yesterday. So COVID is my theme this morning. And there are five points. We've got community. We've got opportunity, we've got vision, we've got isolation, oh no, we've got disruption, please no, uh, as we journey on through. So the first thing I wanted to share about was community. A sense of connection is very important. How we are going, what we are doing, and, and amongst that COVID time, we lost a bit of sense of connection and community. And so I was asking myself the question, how are we going to maintain that over the next few months? Because at the beginning we didn't know how long this journey was going to be. How are we going to do this? Well, we use technology. And a willingness from you all to still meet together in some form. To still engage with one another as a church community. Because community for us is very important. Yes, there were short visits, people helping, people get essential items and groceries. Coral's out of flour, but we sorted her out, don't you worry. Yeah. Phone, email. Text, Zoom, church padlets, Facebook, YouTube. Hey, we did it. Praise God. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Give yourselves a clap. We got there. Quick decisions and actions brought about a great result. As we moved quickly and made changes and got things happening. We did the best we could as a church community. We weren't the church up the road or down the road or that one over there that was doing this or that. We did what worked best for us. And that only worked because you engaged with what we did as a team, as leaders, as worship people, as getting technology sorted. We still had a sense of community. You called people, you rang each other, you stood at Outside front doors, you, you helped, you cared, you were interested. Yes, some things will change. And some things will remain. And other things will become obsolete. But just take a moment and look around. Hey, we're back today with one another. We are His church 
his people, his hands and feet. Clicking a mouse and opening, opening up our phones and our web browsers. Giving out boxes of food, doing ministry in restricted times. We lived out this verse, Hebrews 10, 25. Do not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another all the more as you see the day approaching. Value community. Value one another. Value it and foster it in Jesus' name. The next point is opportunity. Remember Moses. He stands at the edge of the Red Sea. Death behind him. Opportunity in front of him. And lots and lots and lots of people counting on him. What's next, Moses? What's next, Michael? Oh, Moses, sorry. Um. <laughs> Exodus 14, 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And all the night the Lord drove back the sea with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. Often when we think of a miracle of God, it's instant, isn't it? Oh, God did this thing or that thing. But hey, some miracles take time, amen? Yeah. Oh, look, voices. <laughs> Not an empty church in Ken, sitting at the back. Sometimes God's miracle takes some time. The waters divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. Don't go back to Egypt, friend. The old ways, the old habits, the unproductive mindsets. Don't go back to Egypt. Well, oh, that's the way we always did it. Well, sorry, that doesn't work anymore. We've been given an opportunity to do a new thing, to move forward in faith and favour, faithfully moving forward. Yes, things might be a bit, a bit unknown. Yes, things might be a bit scary. Hey, you're walking through a dry seabed and there's water on both sides. But take a step and embrace the opportunity. Let's go. Vision. Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. How's that 2020 vision going? For me, I needed to stop. I needed to look. I needed, needed to clearly see what God wanted to show me for this season. Clearly see what he was up to during this time, personally and as a church community, and as we minister effectively. You know, with unrealistic expectations comes much room the greater disappointment. There are community projects to do. There are new ministry opportunities to, to discover. Don't let COVID cloud our vision, distract our cause, our hope, and our faith. Psalm 34, 8, I focused on this the other day. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. We have lived that and we know that. None of you are unwell. None of you got the virus. Most of your family members are okay. 
Yes, some have lost jobs, some situations have changed, some things have been a struggle, but we have remained well, praise God. Because you made the choice to do what you needed to do for you and your family. As Nola and I did for our family, and as we did for the church family, we made choices. We tasted and saw that God was good and He met us at every interval and at every crossroad. Isolation. It's not fun. Think of the poor people in Melbourne now. Nola's dad's suburb just got moved to lockdown and other maybe got friends, neighbours, family, I don't know. Um, it's not fun down there. And daily, daily we watched the news to see how we were doing, didn't we? We watched our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, act on the best advice he had at his disposal to steer our country. This is not a place for my political views or not political views or, or, or yours either. But I want to say, well done. Well done. Whatever you think or not think. I say well done to Scott Morrison and his team. And we listened. Yes, if you wait a second, she gets a mention in a minute. We listened to Anastasia Palaszczuk every morning or afternoon as she came on out again to give us the figures and to say the hard things. As we listened about what we are doing as Queenslanders and how we were going and how we moved through different stages of different restrictions and what we were up to. And because of what we have done as a state and done as a city and done as a town and done as a region and done as a nation, we sit here today in this building, worshipping God, giving thanks, praising Him, breaking bread, having time together as His church. Buildings aren't essential, but they give us our identity. Here we are in this street. Here we are in this place. Here we are where memories are made and we worship and we give thanks. Buildings are useful, but they're not the be-all and end-all, as we have discovered. But this is, becomes your home and this becomes your identity and your church and where you go to worship. And we're aware of Been watching my messages over the last couple of weeks. I've been talking about our good mate Elijah. He wanted to die. So he ran and hid and isolated himself from his situation. He was spent. He had enough. And maybe that was you. I'm done. Life's over. Things will never go back the same. We're all going to die. Anyone? Hopefully not. I'm done. It's over. You could stay in your pyjamas all day long and eat ice cream and chips and no one would know. <laughs> Except the scales. <laughs> or your husband or wife. Aren't you going to get dressed today? I can't fit in any clothes. Okay. See Belle afterwards. But friends, isolation can be a gift. What a gift isolation was. For God gave us some space to listen to Him. And many of you have commented to me how your spiritual journey and life has grown through a period of isolation. God gave you space and time. What a gift to connect with one another. To care for your family. Maybe you met your neighbour for the first time and only it was a car and a roller door going up and then they were gone. But maybe you had a conversation over the fence. Who knows? Who knows? We were given a gift of time. We were given a gift to make the most of the situation, to care for our families who we were sitting with at home. 
Psalm 121, in my distress I cried to the Lord and he heard me. And I know for some of you it's been tough and it's been hard and you've lost your job and financially it's been a struggle and you were worried about your granddaughter or your son or your nephew or, your, or yourself. But in our distress and in our concern, we cried to the Lord and he answered us. I will not leave you or forsake you. Our final letter today as we come to a close. Disruption. Life and church as we knew it was disrupted. But it's been great in some ways. Many of you have shared with me how many projects you've done, things you've been putting off for years, got finished and fixed and completed. People have reconnected with, with old friends across phones and Facebook. We've done study, we've started online courses, we've done training, there's been gardening and sewing and baking, it's been fantastic. All a bit silent now. That mute button on? <clears throat> Let us not see this disruption as insignificant. Up on the screen there, God often does the extravagant through what we may think is insignificant. What has God been up to? Many of you shared with me a greater hunger for God's Word. You did this course or that thing. You're part of this Zoom meeting or that conference. You connected with an old friend or a neighbour. As we come to a close today, Psalm 119 verse 12, it's from the message, I am single-minded in pursuit of you. Don't let me miss the road signs you've posted. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Make lasting changes. Continue to be well informed. For we are his people. We are his church community. For God is the way maker and miracle worker. Two powerful songs during this time that have spoken across nations and denominations and churches and worship experiences has been the blessing, as you may know, and, and it's been done in many different ways and many different forms. And, and another song has been Waymaker. And we're going to close with Waymaker as we come to the end of our service this morning. So we're going to stand and sing Waymaker Miracle worker. God bless you. Let's stand and sing.